Hey everybody, Rock Paper Mario here and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Yellow. Um, in the last part we took on the Celadon Gym and won, obviously. No, that's like the Pokemon building or whatever, we're not going to go in there. What we want to do is we want to go to the rooftop terrace up here. And you know what, I might actually buy like a couple of things up here. This is an elevator. I know it's an elevator. <laughs> this is an elevator. This is a thing called the present. This is <laughs> until the Fire Nation attacked. Um, but yeah, we're going to go to the rooftop terrace, and I still remember, like, every time I say that, like, that combination of words, rooftop terrace, there had, like, I something, like, in my brain tells me, oh, there's something else called that, but I just don't know what it is. I will buy some fresh water for the guards. Oh my god, we have, like, 50,000 things. Like, polka dollars, like, 50,000 Luna dollars. I'm gonna buy some lemonade because the lemonade is actually really good. Well, I find the lemonade good, like the soda pop and lemonade. The only thing is it's so, like, tiresome to actually purchase. Because I think we're going to actually go ahead and, like... I don't know whether to do, like, the Silphco next. I don't think I have the stamina for the Silphco now. I think the Silphco, I'd probably like like to start my a whole recording session doing the Silphco. Um... And just not have to worry about it, if you know what I mean. Whereas, like, I've already, like, recorded a video now. And then I'm going to start the Silphco. And, like, halfway through the Silphco, I'm going to be like, Oh, I should, like, record Hatful Boyfriend as well. But I can't, because I'm stuck here in the Silphco. And I have to finish that. Um, but, yeah, we got, like, the fresh water for the guards anyway. So I think what we'll do is we'll go to Pokemon Tower. That should take, like... We'd like that should take like max like into the next video to do if not it, otherwise will be finished even in this video so it'll just make it way easier to get behind, get around and um it'll just make it way easier to get around in in Kanto anyway go, 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 go. if you want to go to Saffron City you can go on true I'll share this with the other guards you know I bought like multiple drinks I have no problem with like the rest of you guys having the drinks as well. Here we are in Saffron City and it's all its yellowy goodness as you can see the... Oh wait a second. Oh wait a second, so we can't do Silphco yet. Oh, okay, well I didn't know that. I didn't know we couldn't do Silphco now. I thought that, that we could do Silphco now and I think um, Empolo said it as well, so obviously I'm not the only one who was wrong. Didn't I skip like a load of the trainers here? I think I did, because I think we just cut through here, which I'm going to do again. As I say, any trainers that I skip, I'm not going to go and like battle them off screen, because then I like come back in some video, and Pikachu will be like a completely different level or something. Um, I'm not going to battle them off screen, I'm just going to wait until like the very end of the game, and then I'm just going to go ahead and like battle them then. Do I have the Silph Scope on me? Because that's kind of important. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, we'll take on Pokemon Tower. This place isn't that big anyway. The only thing is, like, I'm gonna have to use Thunderbolt on every single trainer that I fight. Do you know what? I might as well use Repel. I'm gonna have to use, um... I'm gonna have to use Thunderbolt on every single trainer that I fight, and, like, the PP is going to become an issue. But there is, like, that healing mattress. I don't know why I called it a mattress. There's like that healing place upstairs that I can go to if needs be. <laughs> Apparently that's like Mr. Krabs is 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 uh, as channeler in the Pokemon Tower. Ghastly. That was like one of the coolest episodes. Like that episode where like they went to um, Pokemon Tower and where Ash and Pikachu died and their spirits astrally projected out of their bodies and went like having fun with Ghastly and Gengar, or Ghastly Haunter and Gengar, I and mean, like, forget Haunter, it, like, Haunter is the Pokemon that Ash ended up having then in the end. Be gone! Silence! Be gone, be gone! Just have, like, another throwback to, to Wind Waker. How crazy that man was. Like, I remember, I think I was, like, far more, like, just to continue what I was talking about in the, like, the last video about, like, LPing, and like LPing styles, like I remember I was like saying like I used to do more voices back then I think. Which I think like, like I think I actually used to be more exuberant back then. Like I think I used to be like more kind of 
crazy, not crazy, but kind of more like full of energy back then with my LPing. Whereas I think now I'm kind of more, um, I don't know, I don't know what what I'd like call myself now. But like I th I think I did have like more like ridiculous kind of kooky energy back then than than when I LP now. But yeah, good times. Like it's not like a negative thing. Like, I don't mean to say, like, oh, I was better back then than I am now. It's just that, like, people change. Like, you have to imagine, like, that's, like, what, six years ago? Like, a person changes a lot in six years of their life, especially between the ages of, like, 20 and 26. I mean, oh my god, like, people change, you know? So their style and their approach to doing everything will change. Or, like, their sense of humor will change slightly. Or the things that they find funny, you know? Or just, like, the way they... they they act or behave in general will change. Yeah, I'm gonna fight you. We have all like this list. These like channelers are like a load of psychics or they're like ghost hunters or something. I think they're pretty cool. They're like, um, what's her name in Card Captor Sakura, who was like their teacher who also used to work at the shrine or whatever. Do you remember that? I actually haven't, haven't watched, like, the Cardcaptor Sakura anime in so long. Like, I've, I've played the game, like, not played the game, I've read the manga, like, several times, like, the whole thing I've read several times. But I haven't actually watched the anime in a long, long time. And you know what I'd kind of like to do, because, like, I only really ever watched the whole thing when I was younger and, and in the English dub. Like, when I watched it, it was, like, the English dub back then, like, which is, like, really kind of crazy, and it has, like, it, it kind of changes a lot from the, from, like, the, the original concept, um, or just from, like, the relationships between the different characters, you know? Because, like, in, like, in the manga, anyway, like, her name's, like, Madison in the English dub, so I'll just call her Madison, like, she totally has the hots for Sakura, and her, like, mom totally has the, had the hots for Sakura's mom or whatever. And Sakura totally has the hots for, like, this, that, and the other person. But they kind of, like, tone that down a lot. So, like, in the, in the anime, at least in the English dub, like, the only person who has the hots for anyone is, like, that Sakura has, like, the hots for Yue, as he's actually called. Um, and, like, other than that, the rest is kind of brushed under, swept under the car, no, I don't want to use the bicycle, I know, I can't, like, cycle around this place of, this solemn place of mourning, like this is, oh, I'm just gonna fight all of you for the experience, no, wow, I'm just not even, this is just like a chocobo, they just keep making chocobo noises, <laughs> it's like, quee, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'd like to kind of like watch the original Japanese dub of the of Card Captor Sakura just to see like what that's like. Seeing as I've never experienced like the seeing as I've experienced like the original and that I've like read the entire manga, but I haven't like experienced the original anime because other than that, I've only seen like the funny American dub. Um, which is kind of fun. But yeah, it's just like, I, like, that was like the first, like, I remember, like, Card Captor Sakura, I used to, or like, Card Captors, as it was called in the American dub. Like, I used to watch that, like, religiously, like, I loved it so much. Like, it was just like, I actually adored that program. And I remember I was, like, the only person who, um, oh, I've... I've dealt with you. I've laid you to rest already. You're like Squidward's ghost. We're gonna be. F I'm, we're probably gonna finish this place in one video. In this video, and we didn't even start it in this video. But well, we did start it in this video. But we did like other crap to start. No, I shan't. I shan't join you. Um. But yeah, like I used to watch it all the time, and like I was the only person in my like circle of friends who really liked it. You know. Everyone else kind of, no one else kind of really taught card captors, card captors was any great shakes, but I loved it. Like, I loved, like, the whole, like, the different costumes every episode, and just, like, the different creatures and, like, the different cards, and, like, how they all, like, represented something different, had, like, a different, had a different power or a different base on, like, what they were. 
and I just found that like extremely fascinating and I loved it. Oh, you're like the good witch. You're the white witch, Stevie Nicks. Come child, I sealed the space with white magic. You can rest here. My god, we're watching like, like we're watching season three of American Horror Story again. Cause like I, like I really like American Horror Story. Like I love the whole kind of like tongue in cheek kind of exaggerated um, humor of it, you know? But I love as well the whole way that they they tackle each season differently and like all the different all the different references to like real life um, horror or like real life stories or like real life murderers and, and real life crime and things like that. Um, or like to old films and references to other horror films or other like thrillers and things like that that they just have in it wholesale. And I just love the whole visual of it and how every season has a different kind of visual mise-en-scene, I suppose is like the best word for it. Yeah, we entered the purifying circle. Um, like I love that about it, but like, so I, like I've always watched it and I've watched it like all the way up to, um, even like this here with Roanoke. Um, but like my brother hadn't really watched it, so I got him to start watching it then because he got interested in it when he saw me watching Roanoke and Hotel, I think. So I was like, oh, well, you should watch it from the start. It's all on Netflix. So we started watching it. And we've got up to like, we, like Murder House, and, and then there's Asylum, which is like, if you've watched Murder House and you didn't really like it, I think you could be forgiven for that, but I think if you watched Asylum, then you'd be like completely hooked. Because Asylum was the one that really like grabbed me as well. Like Murder House I liked, but it was just kind of a bit, a bit, Joan you know, was kind of, the humor in it was like a bit more funny than in. Then in the other seasons, like then in Asylum, and Asylum just had that really just kind of filthy, horrific, mean, just like unforgiving sort of style about it, where like there was just no way out, there was no hope, it was just like the, the like there was no sense of goodness or humanity in that in where you were. And I think like that 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 just really kind of hooked me into that whole thing then as well. And then Coven, we're like watching Coven again now. Like, and I'm watching Co and Coven, I remember when I saw it, it was like actually my favorite one because I loved the whole kind of way that it was like a combination between like a horror film and like Mean Girls. Like it just had that whole kind of like high school sort of vibe about it. But it also had like the whole kind of like, oh, we're in New Orleans and, and we're in the swamp and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it also had the kind of horror element to it, but it was just very light and very kind of fluffy compared to like other, compared to like, uh, compared to Asylum. But like, I, like, I, we're, we just got to the episode where Misty Day kind of got introduced. And now she's like, oh my God, Stevie Nicks is the white witch and Stevie Nicks this, that and the other. And she loves Stevie Nicks. But like, like, I just can't believe it. I, I remember I couldn't believe it when I was watching Coven and like I, Stevie Nicks actually was in it. And it wasn't like Stevie Nicks was in it, like, playing someone else, like, playing another character. I'm ignoring that phone because I'm not answering it. It's just going to be a lot of nonsense and a waste of my time, and I'm not getting up. Like, if I get up, I have to disentangle myself from all the wires and everything. And it's just like, that. I'm just not doing it. It's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, like, I couldn't believe it when I saw that, like, Stevie Nicks was actually in it. And she was, like, playing herself. Like, that was the cool thing, I just thought, oh my god, you're actually such a cool person, because she was in it actually playing a witch. Like, the whole idea idea in the in the show was that Stevie Nicks actually is a witch. Like, all those rumours about Stevie Nicks actually being a white witch are true, and she's actually a witch, and she knew Jessica Lang, the Supreme, and all this kind of stuff, and I just thought, just like, brilliant. I just thought it was just so, such a cool idea. But yeah. I don't know, and then like, I, like a lot of people don't really like Freak Show, but I kind of really did. I don't know, like I, I seem to like really like every season, but for a completely different reason. Like I like Murder House for how kind of over the top it was, and for how kind of different it was at the time. Like there was nothing else really like it. Like I loved Asylum for just how, how depraved it was, and and how mean and horrible it was. Like I loved Asylum for that. Um, and then, like, I love, I loved, like, Coven for the whole kind of, the whole kind of juxtaposition of, oh, this is, like, horror, but it's also, like, a kind of a high school teen 
drama and but there's also kind of like the whole kind of thing about like the modern witch hunters and all this kind of thing and i just thought it was really kind of like like off the wall like you know but it was believably off the wall but then i like i really liked um freak show just for the kind of exploration of humanity that was in that as well like i just thought that was really fascinating and i thought it really like drew me in um and how you really felt sorry for all these characters and how you really had like real real kind of like um real kind of empathy for them and stuff like that i just thought it was really good and then like obviously like hotel was just like visually like i think for me with hotel that was kind of like the the season that had the that had the kind of weakest central plot thread because i just wasn't really interested in the whole kind of thing about him being the real killer and all this kind of stuff and like oh who's the actual murderer and stuff oh we're going to like oh here we go marowak is here i did actually tell you there's like a pokemon generate pokemon origins episode all about marowak and cubone and it's so good like it is really really good the silph scope unveiled the ghost's identity is it space ghost no it's marowak I was actually like, I'd forgotten what Marowak's sprite looked like in this game. I was expecting like the one from Pokemon Blue where it's all like coming in from the right and looks all round at the, and his head looks all round. Marowak's defense is pretty good so I'm gonna have to use two body slams anyway so I might as well use two seismic tosses and see where that gets me. I'm gonna like lay you to rest just like Squidward's ghost. Don't worry Marowak. And then I'm probably going to end this video. I'm probably going to go back to the the purifying circle and end the video there. The ghost was the restless soul of Cubone's mother. <laughs> the Macarena. And it departed the afterlife, just like Squidward's ghost. But not Squidward's house. But yeah, like I think Hotel, like I wasn't really that interested in the central plotline of it, but just just visually of course I take one step. I take one step and I run into a ghastly no, I'm not catching you today. I caught Haunter in the last Pokemon Yellow LP I did. I'm just trying to make it back to like my, my happy space here. So I can end off the video in peace and give myself more time. But yeah, like Hotel, I wasn't really interested in the plot of it. Like I think that was kind of weak. But like all like the side stuff was really cool and the side characters were really cool. Like everything about that show, that season was really, really cool except for like the, the main central plot about like your man and about the serial killer and whatever um but like visually it was just so stunning like and i just loved the whole kind of los angeles as this kind of rotten to the core den of iniquity that it was where like i don't know i think that's enough talking about that at this stage this video has been going on a bit long so i'm gonna say thanks for watching this part of let's play pokemon yellow in the next part we're going to finish off the pokemon tower in like two minutes um, so we'll see you then. Bye.